swing dance club. Uh, we worked on angle variations and how to clean up the angle a little bit and how to move it around and make it look a lot more fun and entertaining. So the first thing we did was we talked about Lee's arms and the fact that her arms are not designed to stay up here and be in a constant horizontal battle with the leader, but she rests from here and it's my job to honor that rest and carry the weight of those arms throughout the dance. Now, the question was posed, and it was a great one, is that she's getting arms. No, because if you watch her frame, she's solid, she's engaged in the mongoids and the lats all over the place. And so her body is still carrying that position, but we're working together as a team, not fighting each other. So that's the first thing. The second thing that we talked about was that as the leaders in camp four, stand there, man it up, <laughs> or first in that, not going to do it, bang, and we're done. It lets you all also be conscious of your posture. I'm sorry, Cole, was I interrupting you? <laughs> two, thank you. Yeah, two, one. One, two. Here's the four, and stand it up, and now you have something to dance. So we also talked, and we will talk to this now, about what happens on her anchor and what she's doing. As we hit down four, here, one, two, three, uh, four. Go. Uh, I say, I will continue moving down line and I'll unwind myself. And she's going to ask me for a little help. Because remember, she's still going this way. Unless I have a little bit of help for her, I can't develop that hip. And if you watch, one thing she does about amongst many zillion of others, Exception, but watch how that right leg is going to release when she finishes her anchor to get ready to come down the track. Watch this. And it's there. It's effortless because she's not stuck here. She allows this action a little bit with my help to release that leg. Yeah? So then we talked about a couple of things we can do with anchors. The regular one, which is that stretch out to the open away from the connection side, which is here. And the other one, which we did, uh, we do this in both vertical directions so you can sort of see it a little bit better. As we do a right side pass, we're just going to come down my right side and she'll walk you through it because this is her baby. Two, three, uh, four, and stay round up. And I anchor here, five and six. Then when it's time for run, I still step on the right foot. And then on two, if I want to, I can unwind myself. And you notice how what I did after that step automatically followed because that's what you asked me to do. We'll do it for you in the other direction. So is this the direction of the Senior moment, sorry. <laughs> this movement is great for when you feel like you don't want to have to run all the way down the end of the and normally down a very long spot and want to shorten it. One, two, three, four, five, five, six, so one, two, three, four. All right, so you stay wound up. You still anchor. And then you have to go less far. One, two, three. So the fast music, remember, fast or slow music is very often better characterized by what we do with the anchor than how we wander or pull up along up and down the track. So the next thing we talked about was the hitch. How to stretch things out to speed them up later. So snatching, adding time to one place so we can tack it on to the next place. So if you watch what happens here, one, two, three, uh, four. Five, uh, six, one, up, two. So now we have some pop. So that takes a slow song and adds tone and speed to it to make it look more entertaining. And you can do that any, from any precursor, whether it's a whip, an underarm pass, a side pass, it doesn't really matter. For a lot of these patterns, it's better not to do push breaks into them because a push break doesn't carry that rising momentum. A push break is more a stop and go action, so it's really hard to get that continuing connection if you practice only doing push breaks. So here, one, two, three.
three, uh, four, five, uh, six, more arm, and go. And that's, see what I got out of this? And that's all her, I just gave her the space. Now, Leah's capable of doing, not too, too weird stuff, but not really weird. Gypsy weird. So, thanks a lot. One, two, three, uh, four, five, uh, six, one. Okay, do something weird. I like that. Now, you have to have the ability to get that hooked up and move like a runner when you do it, but that's sort of the same idea. The other thing we talked about was a redirection from a shorter type. It could be an outside spin and what anything where the bomb was rotating to a right. So all we did was we took a sugar type out of the force break. Three, uh, four, five, uh, six. One, two, three, uh, four, five, uh, six. By the way, I was super surprised at how well everybody did that. Because <laughs> that's not the world's easiest step. Nailed it. Yeah. Good. So last one more time. One, two, three, uh, four, five, uh, six, seven, nine, uh, eight. One thing I noticed a little bit that if you don't mind, I just sort of uh, not pick on, but worry about a little bit. Remember, the follower can't move in a phone booth. So you have to create space that says, I call it a whisper lead that says, anything that you're going to come. So, but if you just do this, one, two, okay, go down. Come on. Well, that wasn't very slick, was it? It's not her. Create the space to allow her to figure out where she's going to fill the space. So I'm going to create space here, so now I know where she's going to create. Does that make sense? So always allow a little breathing room to set that up. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you the absolutely amazing Lee Kirkhoff. Thank you so much. And this is all cool stuff you can practice anytime you want.